All right, so first we're going to talk about the CAD feed ability for RescueNet PCR. So RescueNet PCR can take data from any CAD and pre-populate the fields in a PCR. So here we see in our RescueNet tablet PCR inbox, we've got our dispatch record that came from CAD. It is a PCR now ready to go. So I'm going to request that record, check it out into my active PCRs area, and open it up. Once open, we can see from our initial view here that we've got a bunch of data from the CAD system. Things like run number, dispatch complaint, call type priority, the pickup address. We can also see all of our dispatch times are populated for us. Our mileages are populated. If patient information is known, we get all of that patient information as well. Um, demographics, addresses, phone numbers, things like that. Um, so with the CAD feed, the medics get a running start with their patient care report and can focus on their patient care versus re-entering data that's already available in the CAD system. Alright, while we're on the screen, let's talk about navigation. The way Tablet PCR is organized, we've got our main categories across the top of the screen, subcategories down the left-hand side. That lets us get to any screen we need to in two touches. For instance, I can go to Objective and Impressions and document a chest pain. I can go to Vital Signs and Medical Devices and initiate a data upload from a defibrillator, including our Zoll X-Series defibrillator, which is able to use both Wi-Fi and USB. Let's go ahead and upload a case. We would connect to the defibrillator, select the appropriate case from the device, import it, and when that data comes in, again, it's going to attach that entire case record and also pre-populate vital signs, interventions, etc. As you can see, as we navigate, our buttons change color to let us know where we are currently, which is blue, where we've been already, which is orange, and areas we've not yet documented, which is gray. All these buttons, including the questions underneath them and the pick list for those questions, can be customized. So, for instance, if I want to change our subjective button here, which contains things like our chief complaint, our past medical history, patient's medications, patient's allergies, if I wanted to change that to medical history, I could simply go to the admin tool, select form configuration, select the button in question, in this case patient, or actually in this case subjective, and I can relabel that button. Medical history. In order to push that change out, I simply select Update and Form Configuration. When I do that, the configuration changes will be packaged up and distributed over the internet to all my mobile devices. You can see here the package is being downloaded. Once the download is complete, those changes will be applied. Now, if I go back to my inbox, and then reopen my chart, you can see now that the button says Medical History. So changes like that of any kind, regardless of whether it's a button label, whether it's um, disabling a field, adding a field, changing a configuration, modifying a pick list, all those changes are done in the admin tool and then pushed down to the device. Moving along, over here in our intervention section, we can see that some interventions came in from our RescueNet uh, X-Series monitor, from our Zoll X-Series monitor, um, and then we create these quick log screens. What you're able to do is build as many different categories as you want, and each category can have a different layout of buttons, and each button can have different defaults underneath it default values, default dosages, energy levels. And so what it allows the medic to do is with one touch, they can timestamp things like at patient side time. 
They can also one-touch document, we started oxygen, we just started an IV, we administered albuterol, and with one touch, we're time stamping the interventions, and then later, the user can dive deeper into the intervention and further document dosage and route indication response, some of those other values that we want to mandate. Along those lines, we can also enforce mandatory or required fields triggered on any data currently entered in the patient care report or combination of data. So at any point, the end user can hit the complete PCR button and the system will validate the patient care report um, based on the type of report that's being documented. You can see here we're missing some mandatory fields. I can list those fields out. In this case, we've got a pre-scheduled call. We need the bed confined wizard completed. We need our patient disposition. We need our Zika survey to be completed. I'm able to touch the field in question. It's going to tell me why that value failed. In this case, it's blank. I touch it again. The system takes me right to that record where I can go ahead and complete the requirement. And in this way, I can work through my patient care report. Once we've satisfied our complete call rules, the chart can be completed, authenticated, and finalized. With a connection to the server available, I'm able to save this chart off of my mobile device and package it up and send it to the server, including the X-series or defibrillator data that was attached to the chart. At this point we enter our QA phase. So completed charts can enter what we call our workflow and the workflow allows custom QA routing of the PCRs based on custom triggers. So let's take a look at the QA tool. This is the RescueNet ePCR workflow tool, and what it allows you to do is design flowcharts for automatic PCR routing based on custom triggers, based on custom data, or any data within a PCR. So uh, initially the PCRs are completed, they'll enter the workflow, and then the workflow will then say, all right, every PCR in this case is going to be reviewed by a supervisor, and then the supervisor can then decide if a chart needs to be automatically routed to the medical director, automatically routed to a peer review group, or whether this chart does not need any further QA, and in this case, it will go down to our reporting archive. This PCR routing can be based on automatic triggers, such as any cardiac arrests um, documented automatically go to the medical director. They can be based on manual triggers um, entered by the QA supervisor, such as further review needed or peer review required. Those items can be documented in the QA portion of the PCR product. So if we go back to our tablet product here, as a supervisor, any calls that meet my QA criteria are going to be automatically sent to me. I'm able to then request the chart, open it, and now we're going to be looking at a read-only version of this chart. So you can see here our side buttons are gone, we're simply looking at a summary, and I can go through screen by screen and QA this particular run. To conclude my QA process, I'm able to go in, select QA comments, and add both free text comments and also utilize QA markers which are searchable and reportable and can also be used to trigger further review. So if I mark this particular patient care report that protocol wasn't followed that can be a trigger to automatically send the chart to the peer review group or if I mark this chart medical director review required it will automatically route to the medical director inbox. So in this way, I am able to QA a call, utilize the QA markers and comments to determine the next step in the QA process for any given patient care report. Once concluded, I am able to mark the patient care report reviewed, reroute that chart back to the medic or to another person for further review, 
or send it to another QA phase manually if the automatic routing is not an option at this point.